I know people are going to want to ask about the problem director. And I, I'm sure you have a lot of stories, having done a lot of episodic television uh, with that, but it seems like these days everybody is calling themselves a director or a director of photography when they really probably shouldn't be. So how, as a DP, you know, do you handle the, for lack of a better term, the, the problem director? Patience. I think also you have to give them you have to give them a little space too because there's been times where I've been shooting something and, and you know the director says this is what I want to do and it mm -hmm. makes absolutely no sense to me at the, mm -hmm. at the time and you know you try to have a quiet conversation with them and say okay well you know you're trying to imagine what he's trying to yeah. you know, render out here and then I'd say it's like almost you know almost fifty fifty where you see it at, at the end and you go oh. Well, he didn't describe it mm. the way, you know, very clearly, mm. but now I see what he's saying, and it's brilliant, and I never in a million years right. could have imagined it. And then there's the other 50% of the time where you go, I didn't get it then, I don't get it now, yeah. you know, and it's just a difference of opinion. But you're right, you should go into it, at least giving them the benefit of the doubt. You have to try to work with them. I, I think I've also been very, very lucky uh, myself that I've never really had any, like, screamers or, like, guys that are just totally bonkers, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully. Or shouldn't have been there to begin with. Or shouldn't have been there, yeah. I mean, I've certainly had that. I mean, I've not had anybody who's been impossible to work with, but I've had people who won't listen. And you do tell them that that's not going to work. And, and look, I'm just trying to save you time here. This is not going to work. You're going to get to the edit, and you're going to go. That doesn't work. So just mm -hmm. just take a step back, person, have a listen. I just know it's not yeah, gonna work. I know it's not working, you know, because I've, you know, it all comes down to relationships. I mean, mm -hmm. it sounds like you've got a great relationship with Neil, and having a relationship with somebody like that is is is, is what everybody really needs and everybody wants because you having something. I mean, I'm sure you've got guys you've worked with for many years, and you trust them. It, it comes down to the trust that you can have with people. Like I have, I have people who you know work in sounds or lighting who I absolutely trust. And it's always very nerve wracking working with new people because sure. you don't know what they're like. Mm -hmm, sure. And so if you've got that, that crew and that people that, you know, this, this team that you've got. It makes it so much it easier. It so much easier. And it's nothing more stressful than working. It's almost like the first day at school. You and feel everybody out and. You don't really know, yeah, exactly how everybody works. And you like, and it's, 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 yeah, I mean, it can be quite difficult, but I always, I do love working with people that I trust because it's an absolute pleasure because you know that you can just relax and you think mm. you're not stressing like. And then the creative juice is Yeah, you don't have to watch what they're doing. You can concentrate on what you need to do rather than have to make sure that they're doing their, their job properly. And I love. Not I mean, always possible. But not always possible, no. Trent, Trent said something very good. He said, per director describes something and half the time he describes it and you don't get it and then you see it, oh my God, it's terrific. Uh, I believe the truth is visuals are a completely different animal than, than words. We talked about that a little earlier uh, yeah. and, today. And, I, and I, I believe you never are without a camera. And I believe you go out with a director, and I like it with the AD to take notes and a few stand-ins or something like this, and you work through the things, hopefully on, the, on location, on mm -hmm. set. You work like crazy to do this before the tech scout. It's an extra rehearsal. Sometimes the producer doesn't get it. Sometimes you do it in your own time. It doesn't matter. And when you're working out the things, you do it with a camera, you see a finder, you see it in visual terms where you can talk about it. And if it's not going to work, instead of having to convince them mm -hmm. that you're smarter than they are, which is a difficult thing to do, you're, you're, you're working through the visuals, and that gives you a huge leg up in communications. So what did you system. say earlier? You said words are a terrible descriptor of images or something? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean, they're just, they're a different medium, so and it's very hard, and someone says, well, I want this to be languid, and, and, and I want it to feel oh, uh, uh, like this, and oh my God, you know. Yeah. It's a, but, okay, so that's first thing. Second thing, and again, I've- You, you become a translator in a way, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> second, second thing, we're all creative, we're all, we all have visuals, we all have visual ideas. It's part and parcel or we wouldn't be uh, doing what we're doing. And the first thing, you read a script or you see something, your own image generally pops to mind. You generally have a way of doing it. And you're married to that. That's your first instinct. That maybe reflect your core values and who you are. Hard to let go but, of some of that. But what you have to try to do, and again, I think Trent had the, had the thing there, is you say, okay, I'm going to put that in the back burner. I trust I'll remember it. Let me listen as empathetically as I possibly can to what this man is saying. Let me imagine it. Let me, my first pass is not showing him my idea. Mm -hmm. My first pass is trying to understand his, as questions, put pictures and all that, and to solve this problem 
for the best case, giving the director's point of view. If you try that empathetically, if you listen well, if you show the director that you are working to understand him, then he will not feel that it's combative and that he's fighting you. It won't be a competition. It will relax the tension. I'm just talking when you don't already have trust. There are directors you can just say anything with, the trust's already there. Then what you do is you say, okay, given that, I've got it's terrific, but couldn't you expand that with this or something? And sometimes it's a question if you set up a camera. I try to beat the director to the finder. I generally, the director's messing around with the actors in a blocking rehearsal or something, and I try to get on the finder and set up, and I can show him my idea with every being confrontational. He may say, I want the camera high on so-and-so, and I've got it low, and I said, is this what you have in mind? Mm -hmm. And there's a principle of Aikido rather than karate. Karate, you're fighting force with force. Mm -hmm. Aikido is you take the opponent's force and you work with that and direct it. And I'm a believer. I'm not saying I'm the best at this. I can be... Mm -hmm. into my own mind and all this, but at least the principles mm -hmm. of taking the director and working with uh, Aikido. And I, a lot of times, directors ask for a shot. I thought I had a better one. I set up the shot and said, is this what you had in mind? He said, oh yeah, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the idea is to try to avoid yeah. that. It also shows it because you're at a visual level. So it gets around that right. translation like issue it, that you're talking about. If it likes it, he doesn't have to lose any face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He can say, yes, that's exactly, good boy, you did just what I yeah. asked. You know, I mean, so I, I just think there's, a, and I believe that that's part of the craft. Yeah. I really believe. A little bit of psychology there, yeah. Yeah, and, and doing that, I also believe, just like we're having a wonderful Italian lunch right now. Mm -hmm. I believe, or maybe it's dinner, I forget what it is. I'm, I'm, my, my clock is off, I'm in Hollywood time. <laughs> well, I'm on English time, so I, oh, should, yeah. be, I should be asleep. Probably breakfast or something. A midnight I mean, snack I have, for you. I have no idea. This is, this is, yeah, this is a midnight Joe snack, Dugan. definitely, yes. yeah. Yeah, but, 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 but go and have a meal with a person don't talk about film, talk about what you got in common, find your hobbies, find your politics, whatever it is. Bond with the person on a personal level where you like each other and beginning of trust comes Hopefully you'll have the time so, to do that, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, what is more important? Mm -hmm. Well, like on a corporate industrial, you might not get that kind of opportunity no, but, or time. But, but, but you work for it, even, even if it's just uh, take sure, five minutes. Because like, ultimately, what I want as a director of photography is I want the director to trust my vision that I'm not going to stab him in the back, that he's going to like what it's going, either because he likes my ideas better than his or he mm -hmm. knows that I'll execute his uh, faithfully or some combination, so that he can go and watch the actors and concentrate that and doesn't have to watch compositions mm -hmm. and things. If I can get him at that point, then I'm freer and I've taken a burden off his mind. I believe that a director or producer, let's say a director, goes through and finds a director of photography mm -hmm. whose look they really like whose vision synchronizes with their vision, who when they meet them and communicate, it doesn't take a lot of words, they see, they feel, they, they resonate together, and where the director trusts the cinematographer to go into combat, because that's what it is. You're against budget, you're against schedule, you're against actors, you're against all these things. Not against, but you know, I mean like that. And you trust to go into combat. I can't tell you the number of times we've been behind and the director said, I'll take one unit, I'll take the other unit, totally trusting each other to get, to get the stuff. So the director of photography is key. You pick the director before the camera. Then you say to the director of photography, here's our budget, here's our schedule, these are the locations, these are the kind of situations, this is the mobility. What camera, not what camera is the best, but what camera can you do it best? Are you most comfortable with? I believe an artist and an instrument work together as, as a team. When you get a camera that you don't like or doesn't work, I mean, why come between, an, uh, why come between Hyvitz, Hyvitz and a Stradivarius? Why well, say, here, use this one instead, it's just wrong. But the, uh, there's marketing to producers and directors instead of cinematographers. And there is also um, uh, th this whole marketing thing. Oh, use this camera and use that camera. When really it's, what does the artist know how to use and is most comfortable with? Yeah, so exactly. Now, a little more specifically, maybe it's just uh, something I'm curious about, but working on episodic television with these weekly directors or something like that, did you find that... Uh, did that help challenge you and make it less boring to do those things? Or was it more of a fight? And, you know, there seems like there could be politics there that, that are difficult to work through. Yeah, but you know something? Um, you look at the glass half full instead of half empty. Mm -hmm. You know, again, instead of saying, this is my turf, I'm here every week and all that, yeah. you, you really, I mean, the idea of empathy, you listen and you listen for the best things and say, oh, that's great, that's a great idea, we haven't done that. 
and maybe that'll distract and charm and and uh, you know but but yeah I've had directors and I've had to do shots that I really didn't like but I mm. I mean I tell you I fought like hell but I try to fight dirty I try to fight without it being confrontational mm. you know I try to fight with a little humor a little charm a little yeah, right. uh, um, and I've even had a director that would come in and uh, he would look at it under the work lights and say, oh, that looks good to me, let's shoot. And we put pretty girls into distract and we got him talking about what he liked to do and all this and we did the things, I mean, I mean, the truth of the matter is, if you're passionate about your images, mm -hmm. there is no, nothing you will do not to do it, but frontal confrontation with the guy who okay, outranks you, right. the director, is probably yeah. not the way to do it and you try to be clever and devious and do it other ways. <laughs> Okay. Um, I do want, I do, I know if this is appropriate time, but I did want to comment between the conflict between collaborative work and individual work. Mm -hmm. An individual painter, an individual photographer, an individual composer, the, uh, a writer, my, you know, uh, you know, you write something, it's from your heart, it's, it's your vision, it's personal, and you get a chance to do that. I also make little personal films. A lot of times they're just stills put together with classical music or something, but I, I love that. It's totally free. But there's another thing that's different from that, which is collaborative art. And when you, with whatever skills you have as a visual director of photography, work with a director that is a gifted storyteller, that is good getting things out of actors, work with actors, work with specialists, like the camera system we're talking about that can visual everything in their head, mm -hmm. then you can get a collective piece of work that's much, much bigger, much better mm -hmm. than anything you do yourself. Right. And there is a certain joy in collaborating and lending your talents. It's a more modest joy than saying, ah, I'm the author of this. But it can be a very fulfilling joy. Well, there's a high in that teamwork, too. Yeah, and because you look at the work and, oh, my God, it's greater than any of us. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. something very gratifying about that. So I don't say one is better than the other. No, no I mean, working in a team is, 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 a, is a great experience. I mean, if you work on your own, it's, it's, it's fun and you get to have that control. Working in a team and, and bouncing ideas off of yeah. each other, there's, you know, that's a, a really, you really get a buzz out of that. Yeah. Especially, and my favorite directors are empowerers. My favorite directors are directors who somehow, without losing any of their own stuff, says, I mean, one director said, Bob, are you trying to make a masterpiece? on episodic television. Mm -hmm. and th that's code for, come on, cut it out, you can't do that. And I on honestly answered him yes, and he said, great, don't let me or anybody else stop you. And he proceeded mm -hmm. to empower me, feed me, trying so I could have my masterpiece as he, as he was directing actors and doing things like that. When you get that generosity, and you try to be there with your crew, you try to empower your operator and your gaffer and your- Bring out their talents. Exactly. So when you get this generosity, everybody's trying to empower everybody else. Mm -hmm. It's a love fest. And man, that's a high. Mm 